It's August 27th, a Thursday night around 11 p.m. at the villas on 26th Street. Orange, purple, red, and green disco lights flicker across the walls as music of an almost dull nature plays amidst the chatter. It is nearly impossible to weave your way through the crowd without bumping into someone. The thing everyone has in common is that no one wears a mask. No one stands less than a foot away from each other. It would come as a shock to you that this is all happening during a pandemic. You have to think about what is the virus that you're dealing with here. This virus is uh, spread by respiratory droplets. What's unusual about this virus is that it's extremely transmissible and that there are individuals who are asymptomatic, who are in the community, at UT, in schools, that can spread this virus. Over, I would say, the last couple weeks, I have definitely started seeing more and more larger gatherings of people. And I was just walking right down the block from my apartment, and I heard that huge crowd in Villas at 26. And like, I figured it was that building because I know a frat rents out a couple floors in that building. I don't really see people, I hear them. There's an alley in between our buildings, and so the sound like echoes a lot. It was a lot more frequent at the beginning of the year. It was like pretty much every day for like a solid week. But now it's like once every other day, which is still not good. So I'm surrounded by a lot of frat houses and sorority houses pretty much at every intersection. And it's really upsetting, particularly, what was it last week on bid day, like to look out uh, of my balcony and just see swarms of people walking by, no masks, no distance whatsoever. From my perspective, the reality of the situation is that we have shut down virtually all social gatherings at chapter facilities, and our judicial system is effective in regulating large chapter events. And the majority of reports we receive are members of our organizations who are just having a gathering in their apartment. And we fully accept responsibility over those members because they're members of our community. And we're working hard to educate them to prevent that in the first place and also hold them accountable. Our judicial process is focused on reform above all. We do have a policy in place that has long-term social probation for a chapter that violates a clearly chapter-sponsored event. If you're at a party and you're not wearing a mask and you're not doing social distancing, that it is very easy for the virus to jump from you and to the next person. Inconsiderate even seems like a mild word to use. It's cruel to the people who are cleaning up our campuses, our faculty, our staff, our custodial staff especially, who are gonna have to be dealing with the rippling effects of these reckless college students who are only thinking about themselves. This is my last year here. I wanted to go to football games. I wanted to go to parties and stuff like that, but the reality is that's just not going to happen. It's not just a simple solution of calling the police because at best, that'll do nothing. And at worst, it'll actually endanger black and brown students on campus. So what's frustrating is that there is absolutely no way to sort of intervene with these parties and we just have to suffer the consequences. Under Austin Travis County orders, outdoor gatherings of more than 10 people are prohibited until December 15, 2020. Since March 1st, as of September 14th, there are a total of 828 positive cases among UT Austin students, faculty, and staff. UT reported three coronavirus case clusters in a West Campus on the morning of September 10th. American Campus Communities, which offers six off-campus housing options for UT students, says its residents could be subject to penalties including eviction if residents have gatherings with more than 10 people. UT says it has started reaching out to advisors and national leaders of student organizations as well as property managers when members and residents violate state and local orders. The Daily Texan editorial board has called on the university to create a permanent task force to investigate Greek organizations and fractions and to release information about Greek life COVID-19 violations. It's a very party-centric culture, obviously. And I think some people within that community get so wrapped up in the community itself, that they forget there's a world outside of it. Um, I can't speak for all of them, uh, but they are clearly showing their privilege in the fact that they are gathering in groups of 
40 or 50 completely thrown caution to the wind. It's for such little reward. I know sororities and fraternities that went completely virtual for their recruitment, but those that don't have clearly said that they prioritize you know, their parties, their activities, their sorority or their fraternity over basic public health. All my like sisters and stuff, everyone's been doing a really, really good job at social distancing and like following all those protocols. Uh, we recently took rush photos and we planned it all out and we put a disclaimer on all our rush photos. So I think like, I can't speak for all Greek orgs, but I'm really proud that my sorority is doing their part. There has to be a commitment, I think, especially by the leaders of the Greek organizations and their national organizations. I think the issue here has become that a few dozen full-time students have been placed in charge of this role for 2,000 IFC members and 6,000 Greek affiliated members. So we're personally hoping that the university recognizes the large amount of hours that these student leaders are putting in. We're looking for a partnership with the university right now in terms of accountability for members in apartments. I think a lot of the burden goes to the students themselves off campus. I think the university's done an exemplary job in creating an atmosphere on campus, right? Including testing, you know, students for free if they're concerned they've been exposed, contact tracing and so on. But all of that can be negated if students don't have some level of responsibility and care to protect those around them. Not only their fellow students, but the ripple effect of secondary transmission to those who are, could be much more susceptible than a young health college student usually is. I think whenever there's like a weekend or a Thursday or Saturday night where things tend to happen, we just stay active, check the form constantly and try to stop things in real time or prevent things earlier in the day that we hear rumors about that we shut down before they happen. But we understand that a few members of our community not following the rules puts the entire university and our community at risk. So we're accepting the responsibility that we have on us and we're hoping that our community and trusting our community is gonna step up to the challenge here. Some peer pressure is good in this kind of situation. If you have someone calling out, like I know this party is going on at this specific building, probably by this specific red or sorority, it'll kind of help pressure people to take this at least a little bit more seriously even at least for like saving public face. While adhering to social distancing guidelines is still crucial in stopping the spread of COVID-19, human connection seems to be more important than ever. I know it's like hard, especially for freshmen, because my roommate is a freshman right now and she always talks to me about how she has trouble like meeting new people. This whole situation just makes her feel like she was robbed of like her college experience. Even in my friend group, we've definitely had some problems with like some of our members of our group kind of not taking COVID seriously at first. But we kind of just encourage each other to take this as serious as possible. I don't want to trivialize the pain that can happen by not seeing your friends. Like, we are social creatures. We want to be around people. I understand that. But there are ways to do that without compromising uh, your own public health. We don't want anything to happen to our wonderful students uh, during this very, you know, serious time. How we act will depend on how soon we get out of this together.